don't do it. Woo. Sorry, did I get your attention? <laughs> hey, guys, don't do it. Do not pay your truck off early. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, I've been talking to a couple people here lately, and they wanted to know why I don't advise paying your truck off early. Isn't that, aren't, aren't we in the business to pay our truck off early and lower our monthly expenses? I said, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely it does. <laughs> but let me let me let me give you a little story, a little backdrop on this. Back about five, six, seven, maybe ten years ago, I don't know. Is it 2016 still? I mean, time flies. It's been a long time ago. You get me? Um, I was talking to a farmer. He just built a chicken farm. And I'm gonna save you the small talk for the long story. I'm gonna give you the small on. I'm gonna chop it to the skinny. Uh, advise me when you do build build a farm, do not use your money. Use other people's money. I said, what do you mean? He said, let's say hypothetically I got $250,000 in the bank. Uh, this farm cost me $1.5 million to finance. He said, I had the land as equity so I didn't have to put down money on it. He said, so hypothetically if I got $250,000 in the bank, you think I, it was a good idea to hold on to it or do you think I should have put it down to lower that to 1.25? I said, uh, put it down on it. He said, no. I said, well, why not? He said, look, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. He said, if it gets to a point that I can't do this job anymore and I can't run this farm, I've got two options. He said, one, I can sell it and maybe take a little profit, not likely, or two, go through a foreclosure. He said, there's two other options here. Not options, but uh, examples of what could have went wrong. He said, option one, I could have put $250,000 down on this or I could have not and held my money in the bank. He said, let's say I do lose my farm. Something happens. He said, would you rather know that you put $250,000 down or you still have $250,000 in the bank? He said, your first priority is to take care of you and yourself. Use other people's money for your for your business and endeavors. I said, man, I've got that crystal clear. I was like, man, that makes perfect sense. I, I agree 100%. Anyway, another story. Uh, two years ago, my brother, he was a lease driver for Roadrunner. He had a heart attack. Anyway, he was out of work for about three or four months in 2015. And Roadrunner, they suspended all the payments on everything insurance, truck, trailer, everything. And when he came back, he was still in the hole. Uh, it was somewhere in the ballpark, five, six, seven, maybe $10,000 is a lot. But he came back, he was in the hole, he busted ass for about two months, got back in the black, and you know, it was gravy after that. Well, last year, he got sick and he found out the reason and the culprit of why he had a heart attack goes, when he had a heart attack, he, everything about his heart was healthy. He had good blood pressure, cholesterol levels was, was eh, no, I think his cholesterol levels was a little bad. Uh, I think they, they said that's what clogged one of his arteries. But anyway, he found the culprit. Uh, he got diagnosed with Crohn's disease and it was messing up the cholesterol, clogged his arteries, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, he called Roadrunner and said, listen, I'm gonna have to have surgery. Uh, I'm gonna have to be out for about a month. They said, you know, it's gonna take some recovery time. Because uh, they had, to, he was malnourished. I mean, my brother, if you've seen him, he's about an inch shorter than I am. But at the time, he weighed about 120 pounds. And me, myself, I, I weigh about 230. So I'm 6'1, 230. He is about 6 foot, 120. I mean, he, this why he, this right here is what his leg looked like. He's, he's a little bitty fella. He was malnourished. And he got to the point where, he about died because he didn't have nothing in his body. Anyway, they had to nurse him back to health before the surgery. So he's gonna need a couple weeks. And he called Roadrunner, told him what was up, and what they'd done was, they cut him. Canceled his contract, okay? While canceling his contract, Roadrunner paid the payments on that truck. So what they do, they come and repossess his truck. Now here's what's kinda, put a bad taste in my mouth. This is the main reason I left Roadrunner. Uh, well, this is what got me to thinking I got to get away from these people. 
they came and repossessed his truck. He is he had spent over sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars on his truck in the three years he had it, uh, three and a half years he had it, and they just came and got it. Now he's got nothing to show for. Him. So, like I said, you never know what what tomorrow is going to bring. You never know what lies ahead in the future. So, yeah, we're in the business to make money and pay our trucks off. We're also in the business make bit the business to make money and we all have the same goal in mind and that's put as much money in our pocket as possible so we want we, we want to take that bank account and we want to make that great bank account grow and grow and grow and get to the point where it's, man, it's up in the nosebleeds and most people when they have an extra two or three thousand dollars a month they think oh i want to go ahead and throw this to my truck payment or my trailer payment just my equipment and I'm gonna pay it out early. That's gonna go straight to the principal. I'm gonna pay it out early. And that's what I'm saying, do not do that. Do not do that. If you wanna pay off your truck or your equipment early, pay it off early within your business. And how do you do that, you ask? Create a separate account and go to your bank on your business account, create a secondary checking account and just name it your equipment fund. And if you've got two or $3,000 extra a month, instead of throwing it away, I mean, you potentially could be throwing it away. Instead of throwing it at your equipment to lower it as you go, put your extra in, a, in that equipment fund and let that fund start growing. And when you get enough money, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Say when you get about ten, fifty thousand $50,000 cushion in there, this is what I'm what I'm shooting for. This is my plan. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to call my lender and I'm going to say, "Hey, I'm going to set up automatic bank uh, drafts and uh, ACH whatever to make my payments automatically." But you want to have a cushion in there, and I say ten, fifteen thousand dollars. You want to have enough in there that your truck and your equipment is going to be paid for for at least six months if you was to, you know, not pull any more freight for a little while. So get a cushion set it up automatically and let's say let's say I owe a hundred thousand dollars on my stuff which I don't but if I did I say a year and a half from now almost two years from now I've got enough money to pay off my equipment now do I pay off my equipment no I let that money sit there and I let that automatic payment reoccur monthly without any effort from me at that point in time my equipment is bought and paid for within my company, meaning I don't have to take in any more money to pay for that equipment. The money's there. I just gotta wait through the, for the duration of the payments to be made. But Sammy, pay it off early. You got, no, no, no. I'm gonna tell you why you don't pay it off early. Number one, six months from now, you could lose your job. You could lose your means of, you know, ability to drive a truck. And now, for, you know, you're stuck with no money. You don't put it into a truck, that's probably gonna get repossessed. And number two, you don't want to give up your deductions. Every month that truck is made, there's a there's a, a deduction from your monthly. A, a, there's a deduction from your yearly that's going to lower your net down to give you less taxes to have to pay. Now, if you pay it all off to say this year, 2017, it's going to make this year's taxes look good. But what about next year and the year after that? If you've got three or four years left on your on your loan. You've got another three or four years of deductions to lower your your gross to net or uh, your 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 taxable. So don't do that. Don't do that. For one, keep your deductions, and for two, if something was to happen, do you want do you want to know that you've got ninety thousand dollars in the bank, or do you want to have ninety thousand dollars in equipment that you just paid for, or say you hadn't. Say it ain't even ninety thousand. Say you put forty thousand dollars, but still owe fifty thousand dollars, and your truck gets repossessed because you can't do your, you, you know, you lost your 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 license or something. What would you rather have, the money in the bank or the the equity in that truck that you may be able to take a ten thousand dollar profit on after you sell it? Save your money, guys. Leave it in the bank. Pay it off within your business. Get that account high enough where it's enough to pay for all your equipment. Set up your payments for automatic. At that point in time, your equipment is paid off within your business. You don't have to put no more money towards that, that equipment. It's already there. 
anyways guys hope you enjoyed this like sub subscribe yeah like and subscribe and uh, give me some input i'm always open for advice uh to polish the craft anyways guys we're in the business to make money treat it like a business it's gonna pay you like a business treat it like a hobby it's gonna cost you like a hobby we all know hobbies are expensive see you bye